So, um, so as I talked about it with you guys, so this is a meetup um, that I started about 2017. And uh, I didn't actually have a meetup at that time, but I slowly created a kind of a group. Because um, I believe um, investment in apartments is the way to go. Uh, at that time, I don't want any apartments. Um, um, so, so let me back up a little bit. When I say apartments, I mean multi-family. So I mean a multi-unit. Uh, anything in Canada, the term is like 40 units and um, and it's strictly uh, residential. So, so, um, so this is my group. Uh, thanks for coming, guys. Uh, who is first time here? There's a lot um, people first time here. Uh, so my name is Howard. I have been investing in in Canada, in US, in China, and Hong Kong since 2006. And um, so I'm just like many of you guys, kind of sample my way and learn it, uh, how to do it, uh, learn from people, and go for a lot of course like this, and uh, weekends and, and conferences. So that's uh, um, my background is engineering. I've been in an automation engineer for about 12 years. And um, um, I've been always go to the field, go to the north, and I mean, always go to different places, Grand Prairie and um, mm -hmm. Dawson Creek and all those places, like commissioning for gas plant, oil plant, terminal. So that's what I do. I, I'm an engineer by trade. Um, do you still do engineering now? I'm still a professional engineer, but I don't do any. Um, so you just do real estate 100%? Who wants to be an engineer? Like, <laughs> 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 Who is an engineer, by the way? I do. I do. Mechanical? Yeah. You have to go to the field project? Yes. Yeah. With who? Sorry. With who? I'm with construction, actually. You're construction? Yeah. Yeah. Infrastructure. Infrastructure? Yeah. Yeah, guys, late coming is if you can put in a sticker, which I see many of you already put, and please tell me you have to sign in. So this is my group, and you see, I say number eight. So the number eight here, it means actually this is number eight session of this year. So if you guys are new here, so, so you guys know I've been here for, I mean number eight for this year. So I've been here and um, explaining this topic um, from the beginning, and I have like the exact, if you put the second page, it's basically talk, basically show you I've been doing it for this whole year, entire year, and um, this, will be the last one before the November one. So I'm skipping the October meetups uh, because I have a boot camp. You probably see that on the sign sheet. And um, let's speak. So, uh, so this is it. So um, by the way, so you see, take a look at a little bit of time and look at that. It's, uh, I think it's on the second page of your menu. So I always try to be organized. Um, I apologize for the quality of the print name. A uh, little bit picked up on my print, print name, but I figured out that's something's better than nothing. So I have started to talk about um, um, how to buy one half family. I say 90 days, you know, it's really, you know, it's, it does take more than 90 days to, 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 uh, to do all this if you're new. Like, you know, like, I understand that. Um, but you can definitely. Uh, can close a property in 90 days. And whoever who is participate in commercial, uh, and you know that if you put it in uh, offer, then most time you will be closing within 90 days, right? So um, selecting market, which is earlier this year, and then say, how do you, I talk about how to um, um, do your marketing campaign, which, um, um, when I say marketing campaign, uh, like, so anyone who wants to have a guess with you, you don't want to talk about when it's a marketing campaign. Like creating marketing campaign. Is you know? Why that? So uh, your marketing campaign, campaign would be marketing to target your deals, right? So either uh, in last year, uh, product sellers, and stuff like that. Marketing deals, marketing for in money, maybe? Yeah. 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 And by the way, this is, my marketing, just so you know. You know, anyone who in business, you know that I'm pretty sure it has to be marketing. Your construction company needs to market to the client. And um, that's no difference when you're in real estate uh, business, you have to market to your, whoever that actually, you know, have to be. Who actually, like, I just gonna do, I know that I have asked you guys to fill in 
how do you hang up with um, who know me because of my friend? I don't know anyone of you guys before I come here, so I guess I just send some sort of Facebook meetups um, or sort of pay ads on, on Facebook to get you guys to be here. You know? um, so that's a form of marketing. Um, creating a team, so market, like uh, multifamily or commercial is a, is a big um, team game. So um, you will need partners. We talked about earlier that you need partners, money partners. Um, you know, when we talk about partners, most of us will immediately think about oh, money partner. Um, that's a lot more than just money partners. Um, money partner is very important. Um, but uh, how do you, I have a question for you guys is, so who do you think that you need money partners to close the deal? Okay. Who, how do you attract them? Networking. Networking. Hmm? Networking. Yeah, good, that's good. Thanks, Mike. Yes, welcome. Um, anyone? How do you present yourself the money guys can trust you? So that's also come to creating a team. You, so you have to train yourself to know what you're talking about. Education. Yeah. Thanks. 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 Um, yes. So I am in the middle of pulling um, a fund together, real estate fund together. Uh, it's a 40 million fund. And one of the things, um, even though I'm already buying multifamily, one of the things they ask me is the, when I say they, the lender asks me is, where is your team? I don't trust you with 40 million. Have you managed 40 million before? So that's exactly the question. That is, where is your team? Where is your CEO? Where is your accountant? Where is your broker? Um, so I can dream about all day long. It's like my partner. I can go to networking all day long. Um, by the way, I do go to a lot of networking myself. And uh, so that, that's the question. I don't trust you. That The word that they said is, where's your bench? Where's your bench force? Like it's basically, so that's good. You come here and try to close your deal. Find everyone wants to find a good money partner. That's not the hard part. And not the hard part. Understand that, even educated. The hard part is to create a team. So it takes time, energy, and effort. It's like because successful people and connected people work with people that are respected and that they know that they can close deals. So that's create. So I'm. I'm, I'm stopping a little bit of each one of this because I know many of you guys is new here and, and towards the end of the year and spend a lot of time every month. Actually, every month, every second Saturday of the month, um, that was the topic of the month. So I've been, I started since February and each one of this is each month. And then after that, you have analyzed your, team, analyzed your deal and you have your template, analyze cash and cash, cap rate, um, that service ratio, all those kind of good stuff. And again, and the reason to do that is obviously you want to make sure that you have a good deal, you have a great deal, um, et cetera, that's why we're investing, right? Um, and that's also one of the reasons I don't invest in Calgary, um, because it's hard to find good deals, right? Because what is a typical um, single families? Like typical single families, let's say you can renovate it and talk about duplex, I mean, half duplex, I say half duplex because they're cheaper. And, and then you can rent the top and the bottom. How much is it, like, the lowest you can buy? I'm not talking about crazy area. Anyone? 300,000. 300,000? That's good. Anyone, everyone agree? Around that, yeah. yeah. You get lower, depending on the market, or depending on the area. Okay, how low? I've seen in the northeast quadrant, 260, 270. Yeah. Between Let's say 250. 200, yeah. And how much can you get the rent? Just to 11, 1200 up top, mm -hmm. 800, 900 in the basement maybe. So total, what is your, what is your, what is your, so the cost you say, 250, I guess, approximately, okay. And the rent, what is, what is the rent? Total. By the way, I see deals like this five to six years ago when I started investing in Calgary. And I, one time I had one duplex and tried to do this. Um, how much are you cash flowing? Anyone? Give me numbers. Probably 400. Yeah, 400. 
probably do it, okay, 400. And because you already factor in all your mortgages, all your vacancies, all your repairs, all your insurance costs, and you're doing a public measure? Yes. Um, yes, it, it, it's, it's, it's around that. And if you have anything picked up, or like, you know, in this kind of market, if you have top of the bottoms, one of the tenants go up, you immediately go to red, right? I know that. And that's why I don't like about investing in single family and garbage, to be honest. The cost is way too high, and the rent is way too low. And uh, um, who believe in investment in Calgary? Don't don't shy. I just I'm not picking on anyone because I, I, I used to do this right. And uh, who believe that you can find in Canada you can find a better market? I believe that I don't. Who believe that you can find better ratio than this in other country? Good. That's why we're here. So um, um, I believe I have a thought about four years ago, four or five years ago, when the time I was investing in Winnipeg, investing in Calgary, uh, also started investing in the US, and I was thinking that maybe there's some place on earth that actually provides better ratio because I don't want to do my problem management. I don't want to um, I don't want to put everything on my personal because finding like something like this you're gonna be qualifying with your income, right? Maximum you heard about that is five. I know you can do BC, land a different kind of lenders. I know some, one mortgage broker go all the way to 60 units, which, which is pretty good. Basically he's doing him, his wife, his kid, and it's like, you know, and with business partner and, and all that. So you, you can do that. You can build pretty good, pretty good nest egg with doing income, something like that. Um, the reason why you're here today is I want to explain to you how you do it in the US. Um, analyzing deals, so so I don't like this. So this was talk about how, um, how do you analyze and how to profits. Um, how do you negotiate and get good offers, uh, which is step five, and do due diligence. And last time that we, we talked about is um, financing your buy. Um, it basically is a mixture of um, talking about how do you find mortgage money and how do you attract uh, private investors. Because we are here to attract private investors. Um, that's no secret about it, but how do you attract private investors is a really, um, is, is, is more than just um, say that, it's important to know that you need other people's money OPM to actually close properties. But it's also important that it's more than uh, is, is, is a full-time job to be able to maintain relationship with your investors. Um, and today, see the deal. So today, my goal is to, um, I kind of wrap up a little bit. I can't because it's a whole year thing, as you know that. And today, I'm gonna to talk about close the deals. Close the deal, what I mean by that is kind of walk you through uh, the process of um, close a multi-family. Who, who closed a multi-family deal before? Okay, so, um, it's a uh, it's a really um, it's, a, it's a pretty rigorous process, and when you take up this, um, if you go to I even make a diagram for you guys so that you guys can follow along because I think it's um, so if you go to this one this is this is what um, um, what I kind of take it all out by the way all these kind of things I didn't invent myself. I follow someone. I follow someone who has closed many, many different units, and I said I could learn and go to US and try to, try to learn how they do it, and uh, try to pick the most of uh, you know, or a bigger pocket market or like you know other mentors that I, I go to the events and learn about that. So, um, so this work, and I use this to close my building too. Questions? I kind of like to see this as like a process. Like I, I'm engineer by trade, so I like diagram. Um, so I say that you need to at the beginning is you need to find your market. Find a market that's good, you know. And uh, I don't like this kind of market. That's why I look at the US. Start your marketing campaign and be, begin by attracting the deals, attract uh, building relationship with brokers, attracting investors. If you buy in the US, you don't have to attract investors in the US. Can attract investors in uh, in uh, in Canada, other parts of the world, but you have to do your marketing campaign to attract investors. Um, as I said, 
Um, this is a marketing campaign for me. Um, who is also, like I'm interested to know, who, who is raising capital right now for you to? What kind of uh, current? Um, what kind of what kind of uh, what kind of uh, marketing do? Um, I'm just starting, so I'm doing more just organically, just uh, friend, at my, no, yeah, this my is friend. Yeah. yeah, yeah, talking, right talking, now. yes, That's good. having yeah. a website, you know, just getting all of that done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, So those are my marketing, by the way. Mm -hmm. So writing books with other people, so this one of my marketing is a long term game in marketing. People have to notice you um, uh, if you're doing uh, uh, a lot of marketing consistently. And uh, this is one of the really major misconceptions for any entrepreneur, including myself. It's like, I thought that spending like a couple of K here and there is gonna work. In fact, it doesn't, because we are so busy nowadays. Everyone's so busy with uh, marketing, Facebook ads, all those things. So if marketing is really is a long-term thing, like, you know, marketing is simple as like, go out and meet other people and network, that's a part of marketing. Um, branding, creating website, that's another the marketing. And then creating a team. Um, so I have a real estate team, and um, so for you guys that who are trying to raise money, and, and you, you also need to make, you need to you know, have to have a team. Whether brokers, money partners, um, partners in terms of Let's say you're trying to close the deal, it's like a 200 units, and you need more than just money for it. You need the people who can underwrite. You know, you need the people who can uh, do the due diligence. Because the thing is, not every one of us is going to be good at everything. I, I like I personally don't believe I'm the best underwriting role. So what I do is I partner with someone that who can verify the numbers, right? Um, I don't believe I am the person who can raise all the money in the world. So I give up some of the pile my pie to find people who can, who I believe have more connected than me and able to um, find, find, find money because I, I just don't know everyone. There's seven billion people in the world, so I can't, I can't know everyone. Um, so creating a team is really big. And then analyzing it, I talk about it, writing out offers and due diligence. So it's kind of facing, if you see this, it's kind of like start at creating a market, finding a market, do your marketing campaign creating a team, analyzing deals as you get the deals, writing offers, due diligence as you put in offers to get accepted, and finance your buy with the mortgage brokers and then investors. So think of it this kind of like a cycle as you do once and then you can do another again and then do another again. So we're the last step here. Um, I'm just gonna skip this. Today the gender is about uh, closing. So I said, I said, just gonna do 20 minutes at the end for networking. And um, what did I ask you? Who, who, who is excited about closing? That's a good part. Oh, that's good. I like how you guys see it. Um, I actually think it's really, uh, it's a lot of stress. It's a lot of loss, loss stress. Uh, you will see that as I go through the five steps. Uh, of closing my other, closing my other families. I, I've done, I've go through closing um, many, many different times. Um, um, that's always something to go wrong, I guess. That's what I'm trying to say. That's always, I guess, yeah, okay. Um, there's always something to go wrong. There's always a lot of things that you potentially miss. And uh, the first part is like, the money never comes in time, you know? like. It's uh, what I mean by funny is like, you know, when you're investing in people and because uh, um, it's, 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 you, you have a million things you, you put it together and that's the that's time that you need to close it and that's, um, that's really, it's, uh, really, it's really at the time. Um, who hate it? I, I hate it. <laughs> Just honest. Um, is a really stressful point. So, who have to go through since they know that is the way to buy properties? Um, I don't know what I was asking, sorry. So I guess what I'm saying is like, if, if you know how to, um, if you know the step by steps. So, the, I guess the way I say I hate the closing is because I think it's really, uh, it's a really, uh, 
rigorous process. And when I go in kind of close apartments and um, that's a lot of things you have to work through. If you don't have a team, it's really uh, problematic. That's what I'm trying to say. So who is, who is Neil in this meetup again? Okay. So what I do, I just go to the last slides. So save you a lot of times uh, introducing myself. that I'm looking at for people who join my meetup is um, I want to provide tons of value and that's always the prevailing uh, theme of my meetups is uh, you know I want to provide a lot of values not only in education but also in creating your own network because in real estate if you don't have network it's really tough and if you start from nothing just like us just like me you're gonna need a lot of people to help you Hi. oh yeah <laughs> I'm good thank you eventually figure out you know what the barrier to invest in real estate is just such a high thing and we decided that you know we're gonna make this meetup for you know normal everyday people you can join us free of charge and just enjoy like two hours of like networking two hours of like you know knowledge crunching and then you know we just share a lot of information so the reason why we create this meetup is for you for people that you know who doesn't have necessary the knowledge the networks and we come here we share a lot of things and uh, just be, it's going to be wonderful, so that's why you have to come. Um, the eight steps of buying a mother family from like, how do you find a deal, how do you research the market, how do you uh, create a relationship with broker, how do you raise the money, how do you find the product that cash flow. So uh, we are going to the meetup events that you should be coming here. If you're watching this video, uh, we are having this exactly at 1 to 3 p.m. on this meetup. We're going to share a lot of values. We're going to have a lot of networking. We have over 30, 40 people every second Saturday on a monthly basis. So come join me if you want to learn about multifamily for free meetups. This is the place you need to be. sitting in the back playing with earliest Mandy, she's major marketing. And she always make fun of me. I always make fun of her. It's like marketing, who does that? Those things are like for tricking people, right? And now I'm doing it all the time. And because uh, you, you do have to do marketing. And marketing is like if you think about that, um, my mentor once told me it's like who loves McDonald's? McDonald's? Who knows that McDonald's not good for you and still love it? <laughs> <laughs> But you know why McDonald's is so successful? Like, they just say that they're successful. Marketing. It's marketing. Mm -hmm. like, they're not the best product in terms of health, a lot of different things, but they do so much marketing. Um, they're always in their mind. That's why they are so successful. But, it, but the reason why I'm pointing that example is like any kind of successful business has to do, has to do a lot of marketing. That's what we're gonna say. Um, and that's something that you can learn over the years, like, you know. Again, um, typical problem closing. So I'll give you a reason why you're here today. Um, if you never close one, you don't know what to do. So a lot of people here is trying to learn, and I think that's good. I'm trying to provide value for you guys so that you, when you go through some of this like this, it's going to hopefully able to help you. And um, if you close one before, it's still quite a process. When I say that close one uh, multifamily, um, I'm an example of that. I'm still not super excited as close because it's so stressful. Uh, so today's I will share um, when we close one of the good things that I love about closing Mountain Family is acquisition check. Who knows what acquisition check is? Those are the checks that you 
to get some of the attention. So there's a check that is when you expose a property, let's say the property is, is a million, let's just say there's a 10 million properties. At the end, you can get $300,000 check. Is it good? Really? Mm -hmm. Come on, guys, that you guys know. Don't want 30,000? 300,000? It's, it's, it, the, that's, uh, that's pretty typical when you try to close a multifamily lease. Um, as, a, as a syndicator, and that's why most of us syndicators do this kind of thing. It's when you pull the deal together, let's say it's, it's, let's say it's a, like a million dollars deal. A million dollars is a pretty small deal, right? And you can cash on uh, 30,000 acquisition check. And many, many, many companies call it differently, acquisition fee and things like that. And, um, and, but 30,000 um, or 3% of a sale price, that's basically what your brokers get. Right, that's amazing, I think. And um, avoid the costly mistakes that takes you to, uh, to learn. Because um, you know that, who closed the wrong deal before? Yeah. How much that, that cost you, man? It's still the same. Okay, like, that's a lot. Yes. Not knowing it's what to do, not knowing what to do. Yeah. What was the problem? Uh, it was timing. Uh, my partner's the wrong people. You regret it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But if you but you didn't do that, you're gonna next time you're gonna hit that again. Now you're gonna always remember. It's right? all a stepping stone. Yeah. It's all it's all learning curve. Yeah. You can't let stuff like that be the You're still here, you're still closing deals, so I guess yeah. not. Exactly. Yeah. Raising more money to close deals. So that's today's my my goal. Um and I'm gonna show you how I raise I'm in the middle of raising 40 million to buy real estate with, uh, with the fund that I talked about earlier. Um, that I'm going to talk about in bootcamp. So, I always give about 30 seconds. Um, I know I'm a little bit slow start today, but I, if you want, I want to kind of go for the audience, especially for new ones, and the old one doesn't matter. And tell me your name, your, account, your, 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 your name, and why you're here, and I'm going to start from Lee. Okay. Uh, Lee Corbett, uh, just getting started in uh, investing and getting out meeting different groups. So just trying to gain more knowledge and doing a lot of listening to Bigger Pockets on uh, podcasts. Big fan of it, eh? So that's a lot of um, real estate investing in America. So that's kind of why I'm here. Awesome. Well, Bruce. Bruce, yeah, I, I, I got to rent a property in Calgary, so because I'm trying to see how to diversify and invest in other markets. Perfect. Welcome. Okay. Yeah. How are you? Uh, it's, it's my third time in this way. Uh, I have a few properties in uh, Calgary and BC. Uh, I'm looking for alternative or other options, like multi-family, Calgary retail. I don't know. I'm still learning. So. Uh, Sharon? How's your answer? I'm Scott Hurl. Um, I'm currently on my second single family in Calgary. Uh, first one, it was a great one, it was a condo. Uh, Congratulations. Uh, my house. And uh, still learning, always been interested in commercial. Um, I think that's the end goal for most people uh, investing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, here to learn. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Hi, my name's Terry. Um, this is my first time here. I guess I'm here to to learn and gain knowledge on investing because I know nothing about it. So this is all new to me. That's all good. And I'll have to start somewhere. Network with some like-minded people that want to make money. Nothing here. My name is Sharon Nolik, and I'm clearly super eager to start getting properties more in the states. I don't own any other properties yet, but that's where I'm kind of targeting because I want to live there part time and. Where are you thinking? Phoenix. Okay. Yeah, it's a lovely city. We used to own a, hot, a home in there. Hot, hot, yeah. hot heat, yeah. sun. <laughs> <laughs> no winter. No winter. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jason. Oh, Jason. Yeah. Hi. Uh, my name is Jason. I've invested in uh, single family and other residential properties in both Canada and the U.S. before, and uh, now I'm looking to get into commercial real estate and. Uh, and I'm looking for uh, any to network and find any uh, JV investors who want to take a ride with me and invest in some of those properties in, in the U.S. Uh, mainly looking mainly in the southern 
the United States. Um, and uh, yeah, that's why I'm here. Yeah, so one of the reasons why I give you guys 30 seconds is so that, it, you know, I talk about marketing and that's, I believe in marketing is very important and that's why um, the networking is for you guys so that you guys can come when you, when you, when you, it's an easy opportunity to sell yourself, by the way. Uh, Sarah's are the investors as a partner. So uh, feel free to just talk about why you are, why, why people should work with you. Right? Right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm uh, Vincent, I'm French first, and uh, I flipped a couple of houses back home, and I had uh, two apartment building before I divorced, <laughs> so I have to be back on track and just start over. What, where are you from again? Yeah. Quebec, from Quebec. Yeah, Quebec. Thank you. My name is Maddie. I'm Harry's partner, started in renovations, and now he's starting to train me with closing deals, booking appointments for new properties. That's the best description I can give on my job. Uh, I'm Matt. Uh, this will be my third time here. The main reason why I keep on coming back is to network with people and to help build relationships and do like-minded people in the industry. Because after all, we're in the people business. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Kelly, I'm from BC, but we own property here, so I live uh, quite well in BC as well. Both rented out here all your builds. And I'm here to learn and out in town, so I thought I'd stop on and say hi. Where in BC? Wait and busy. We live in North Vancouver, but our company is in White Rock, which is right at the border. So just a few days north of Ottawa. And the other ones in our other properties in Airbnb is the town. So they're both town owners. My name is Mike. Um, invest in uh, secondary suites and doing some rent to homes um, in Ontario from here. Yeah, just come to learn, expand my knowledge, and do some networking. My name is Raul, I'm an engineer. It's nice to you. Um, I'm here from Ontario earlier this year. And uh, my prime goal at this point is to improve my intelligence in US real estate opportunities and multi-family homes. Just see what's out there. Hello, everyone. My name is Veronica, and I've been real estate investor in Calgary for quite a few years. So far, so good. Been uh, through a couple uh, downturns in the economy, so know how to buy the value. And I uh, love to come here, love to mingle with like minded people, and uh, always looking for a JV project. Okay. Hi, my name is Carlene. Um, I've been investing in real estate for about 15 years. We do mostly single family houses, and we own about 20 doors. Um, and now my company, we partner with Anyone here beside me in this or John? Yeah. Okay. My name is Scott. Scott. I've been to a couple of these now. Um, currently have three properties here in Calgary. Uh, looking to come out, network, meet some new people, and think bigger. I like that. How big? Big. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> bigger than single family. I have a few properties here in Calgary. Um, do like rent, uh, buy, renovate, and then rent uh, out long term. But I want to go into multifamily. So I'm currently looking in Edmonton, but uh, so the price points are better than Calgary. But we'll see. So you're coming late. You haven't seen me explain this, right? Oh, no, I did not. Oh, yeah. Okay. No worries. It's not important. No, it's made it. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Ian. Uh, I own a couple of properties here, buying another one, and I'm opening my company this month, uh, helping people get into real estate, showing them how to do their own properties without help from anybody else. Especially, I believe in the term uh, if you help uh, teach a man how to fish, he'll learn to eat for the rest of his life instead of you giving him the fish. And that's uh, the core principle of my company. So, yeah, if you need any help, give me a shout. Well, 
Thanks, guys. By the way, I'm smiling when you say that, but of Christians, because uh, lately I've been watching a lot of Facebook videos of Christians. <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting. Have you guys watched that? Yeah, we watch it. it lots, lots of patience. No, it's like what, it, anything about fish, by the way. It's like cutting salmon, like you know, oh. like like filleting it, and it's like you know, it's 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 fascinating. I've been bringing my my girl to watch it along with me. We can watch watch hours like in one sitting. It's just it's just fascinating. The reason I I I, I love that is because I learn a lot about. Uh, Nature, how nature uh, really, really have a similar uh, relationship with human in our society. Uh, but at the same time, I, I don't. I just enjoy it. So, um, so I said that I've been. I since uh, organized meetup since 2017. So this is my third year in a row. So at the beginning, I started slow. Um, so so far, I've done um, eight here. So this is typo, and uh, I plan to keep doing it because you know I I think that this is my platform to. Explain to people. Um, I think um, a lot of Canadians want to invest in U.S. A lot of people want to go into the place um, of multi-family. Who, um, by the way, for the people I want to ask about, who, for the people who want to jump from single family to multi-family, what is your biggest reason? Let's just forget about the U.S. or Canada. What is your biggest Scale. reason? Scale. Scale. Yeah. Scale. Cash flow. Yeah, that's kind of important, right? Yeah. Why Anyone else? Insulation from red, red models in your example here. Yeah, this is 50%, by the way. This is 50%. Um, I'm not saying that you can make money with single families, um, but after I build like 15 units um, in, in Canada and in the US, I, I just think it's too much work. I just think that if I'm going to keep doing, at that time I would go to build 100 units, I know that at the, at the end of that I will probably divorce my wife, and I don't want to do that. Um, it's just too much work, and, and, and they usually separate in different areas where it's really hard for people to manage it, for, very hard for you to find it. For each one of them, you find it, you probably go for hundreds of, hundreds of properties, and uh, it's just not the way to go. Um, and the reason why I go to the US is basically, um, instead of looking at these numbers, 250, I can divide it by five per unit, easily, and uh, for the rents, I may be getting um, um, six, seven hundred thousand, six, seven hundred, six, seven, six, seven hundred dollars for uh, one unit. So, um, so the ratio is definitely not um, one to one. So basically, with no single family, a lot of people talk about one percent. Uh, in Calgary, it's almost impossible to do one percent. Um, if you, assuming that the occupancy is hundred percent all the time, and then you assuming you do all the work, assuming that you uh, don't have you have zero repair maintenance, you know, and that's what I talk about due diligence. Yeah, you can hit that, but I've done that. I, I'm in the middle of selling all my Winnipeg properties because I, all those numbers in Canada, personally, I think, is really good looking on paper, but it's really hard to maintain on reality. So, um, so yeah, I'm really biased, but I love my bias. I'm in the US. So I've been speaking, I've been on magazine, that's my marketing. I've been writing books with Brian Tracy for, uh, for people who know him, and uh, again on newspaper. Um, so my past, so I used to, as I talked about, I always looking at properties in Canada, in, in, in Calgary. I used to go to all the meetups and, try, and trying to find a way how to learn to invest in the US. And then going to all the meet, meetups and everything, what I find is actually not a lot of meetups talk about investing in apartments. Um, that's why I say this is you know this is my space, and uh, there's also not a lot of, not a lot of meetups specifically talk about investing in the US. They do, but they mostly talk about single families, and mostly they don't um, they don't have a network um, to basically this is a network that you guys the US coming. I hope that you guys keep coming. That's my goal to keep you guys coming um, so that people who, who come here who have an interest on investing in apartment in the US. So that's why um, that's why I'm here today. Share my knowledge. For the last three, four years, um, I've been investing in Hong Kong, so China, US. Unfortunately, Hong Kong is now in, in the newspaper a lot for the wrong reason. Um, um, but the, in US, I'm really focusing on apartments. So that's my meetups. Welcome. Um, so I go to CMXC. So I basically bring this paper for you guys, for the people who need some sort of convenience or belief. 
of thinking the convenience of investing in Canada is where you pay. Um, so this is so on the on the right hand side. So this is the average rent that you can get on all these cities. I know this is by the way this is really high level numbers, um, but you know as my one of the manager Ray below he say that don't try to be ninety nine percent correct. Try to approximate. So by knowing the general market conditions, you know what you get in the approximations. Um, this is the place. This is the price that you get and you paying for U.S. And this is not, I don't think this is on your slides. So you can see on this diagram average pricings and average rent, and people like to analyze it in the percentage percentage of one percent or whatever that is. So when you divide it, this with this, it's basically rent divided by the price. You get and get a percent times hundred percent. So so this is. On two, so the higher the number, is better it is. Everyone follow me on this diagram. Mm -hmm. So the goal here, as a real estate investors, because um, I, do, but by the way, I, I'm really, I'm really. Oh. So we're real we're, estate we're investing. So that's I know that's appreciation. I'm confident in that. I know obviously that's a Vancouver uh, audience here. So appreciation versus um, um, rent to income. Um, appreciation is only, you, no one can really know what's the next wave coming in. And I'm not saying that the price will go up or not. Let's just say this thing. Let's just say that it doesn't move. Um, so I don't always factor in appreciation, except the one that you put in your equity in sweat, then you can appreciate, appreciate the profits. That's different. I'm talking about the market for a while. When you go to a lot of networking events, people always talk about, but you don't look at the last 30 years. Sure, every market appreciates. And you need to market to appreciate, and hopefully that can drop some money and pay off the mortgage. That's not a good investment, in my opinion. So what I'm talking about is how much you're getting rents per month to pay off your debt service, pay off your expense, pay off your mortgage, pay off your property management, all those kind of things. And this, you will have a pretty clear of understanding whether you can pay off every month or you're losing cash at the end of the month. Really good. So why I'm demonstrating here is in US, some state, you can find like 20, 30,000 per doors. And you're getting this kind of rent. So that's why I'm investing in the US, and that's why I don't believe in investing in Canada or apartments. Um, my business partner actually told me that some of the states, some of, some of, the, some of, some of the pocket listing he gets, he can get 70,000 per dose in Alberta. But I'm not him, right? I'm not him, right? He's really connected, well connected in Rotary Club, but I'm not him. He has access to some of the um, 70 to 80,000, that's a pretty good number, right? 70,000 70, 70, per dose in, in, in Alberta. Um, but do they, is, is it the market condition? That's what I'm trying to mention. Is it the market condition? If a burden per average home is 380,000, if the apartments you can find is, let's say, 150,000, uh, 150,000, 200,000 in Calgary, how often do you can get 70,000 70, 70, per dose if I'm not him, right? If I'm not connected like him. Um, so um, that's why I go to US. That's why I go to US, find something that I don't have to fight with all the competitions. Let's say this is double, and by the way, this has doubled since last year. And that competition has gone up quite a bit in the US. Still, you see the relationship between these two and this two? Like, it's, I know we're not, it doesn't have to be engineered to understand that. Like, the higher the rent, the better the investment in terms of getting it paid off. And people would argue all along, but you know, this is the market and things like that. Yeah, I know, but um, this is, this is, this, is, this diagram I think I should have created a long time ago because um, I just believe in cash flow. That's, that's just me. Good, good, good. Next. By the way, I want to ask, who looking at this still want to think that investing in Canada, Canada is good? Be honest. Well, it worked for us. Yeah, it worked for me. Good. I guess it's all relative. It doesn't mean Calgary or whoever isn't a bad investment, but I guess it's all in comparison, and then you have to weigh what your risk profile is and what you prefer. I think that's what it comes down to, right? Yeah. It, seems like the, it seems like the United States just seems like you have more bang for your buck, right? It, it's not that we can't find deals and make deals here, but the United States, you're just paying with less money for more return. I'm also concerned about the president's speech. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Canadian yeah. investors, uh, I was, who knows uh, who is uh, Marcus Vaynerchuk. Marcus Vaynerchuk is a, one of the biggest uh, uh, commercial uh, real estate broker. So they, they help selling and brokers connecting deals and stuff like that. I think, so they're opening a new office in Anvil. I think I was listening to the podcast, a webcast uh, Wednesday, and they say, um, Canadian investment from Canada to the US have doubled since, I think it's doubled, 2018. Um, I don't know, like, that's never something for everyone, by the way. That's all, no matter how, no matter how expensive Hong Kong real estate is, there's gonna be still people who buy in there for different reasons, like appreciation for cash flow, and that's a different strategy, and I respect that. Um, but um, the, the, that, that, that's definitely that, 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 that a trend, where the stress test is more rigorous in Canada. And that's always, you know, that's, you can wait all day long. But, you know, from my perspective is, as an investor, when I'm paying with people's money, all the people's money, they only care about the return. Like, they only care about return. Of course, you also have to mitigate the risk. And that means to educate yourself, to knowing what you're doing. You're creating a team, that's really important. And, um, but at the end of the day, they really, they, there's two things what investors is really always thinking in their mind. Like, can I get my money back? What's the return? Like, you know, and then, you know, I'll promise you, they, they have to trust you in the like you. Um, but my thing is, the US, like, Donald Trump is going to likely get another, another, Trump, another term. Yeah, yeah. And, and whether we like it or not, he's going to get another Trump, another term. Whether we like it or not, Trump, I mean, uh, Trudeau might get another term too. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like supposed to be the joke. Trump. Yes. Um, so the economy in U.S. What I'm saying is the economy in U.S. is likely going to stabilize and becomes um, as continuous of its of its growth. I know most people are worried about the economy. Uh, you know, I was there's one people, one people explained to me in 2016 when I started investing in apartments, and they tell me it's like you know, has been eight years now since 2008. What has happened in U.S.? What happened? In US? And, and it's happened. You can't wait. You can't wait. What happened in, 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 in Alberta? This price hasn't go up. This price hasn't go up or like maybe go down 15%. Since which year? Um, sorry, 2000, no, I mean Alberta since 2014. 2015, that depends on the property, of course. Average, they said it's about 4%. Go down? Yeah. Go down? Yeah, but that's not doing everything. Yeah. Most people contribute to it. Who own a home in Calgary? That's just not like you. Have your price go down? No. My 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 home will fall. Yeah. Um, my my home go down like in Bridgeland. Right? So um. Sale price or tax price? Hmm. Sale price or your tax? Well, I don't sell it, but I know it go down, right? Like when you when you enjoy this market, the price will go down. Mm -hmm. Like it is. Let's just don't do this. I mean, it, it, it has gone down. Like you know. That's like when you talk about so many people losing jobs, it has gone down. Um, and we can argue all day long, but I think it's gone down. Um, if, if we're are we selling at this time, no. Um, when I sell my, uh, so I got a single family's properties, duplexes. I lost 40,000 when I buy and sell it, it was in both. I, I, I don't know every different market, right? I just can explain and, 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 and tell you about my experience. It's definitely more uh, sell it than buy it, I think. Um, that's my experience, and, and for those reasons, I don't like to invest in Calgary. I, I still call my Calgary as my home. I just don't do it. Um, why apartments? So a lot of so let's just stay away from the Canada U.S. or like local home. That's going to be always emotional because that's where you uh, you can touch and you can feel, and that's your home. But that's one of the reasons um, why. Uh, apartments is because it's much better price per door, and uh, I'm gonna say that you can't scale the single families too. You can't scale the single families. Like you may think twenty doors is is, is or thirty dollars, thirty 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 dollars scale is not scalable. When you talk about apartments, apartments guys talk about hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like seriously, in the U.S. See, like I, I'm I'm giving you a reality. Like the medium medium level guy in apartments in the U.S. is six hundred units. Um, so you can't really scale in, in single families, right? And, and the reason why they can buy that much is because the price is much lower. Um, and then you don't have to unplug in your toilet. 
and then you have your scale. You can buy much more scalable. And by the way, single family is not an investment class. You know, they, when they talk about investment, they rarely talk about single family home. You know, except if you like one mother that have her own company that can buy twenty thousand or like in the middle of the night, like US US and but most of us don't. So investment um, in single family is that's why I don't invest in that. And um, big guys don't, also don't usually buy single family, and I don't want average return. That's just one of a few things. Um, so my goal is I want to build this as a multi-family in the US, only group in, in Canada, in Calgary. And I also find the problem is like go out there, it's not a lot of focus on multi-family, and then it's licking off information on investing in the US. So this is kind of uh, my track records. So this is where we hold as a company, as personal, as my business partner. So closing. So finally we talk here. So I'm gonna dissect it into those five stages. So LOI stands for uh, letter of intent, and PS stands for personal sales, DD stands for uh, due diligence, proposing, uh, close closing. And uh, so those things are pretty easy to, to kind of know that and visualize. I can create that page on that. Oh. So maybe it's easy for you guys to follow. So this is it, right? And then on each one of the pages I can um, I've shown the diagram on the right hand side so that you know where you're at of the process. So, so this is a typical process. You have um, offering stages, purchase and sales, due diligence, uh, pre-closing, and post-closing. Um, LI stage. So who has submit, submitted an uh, offer, a letter in hand in, in like you know in any form of commercial? So um what I mean by that is um, letter in hand is basically is a two or three pages documents and basically spelled out the key terms. Uh, price, um, closing date, <coughs> effective date, um, um, how much you're buying, um, and things like that. So it's a really high level contract. It's, it's a high level handshake between buyer and seller that you basically submit it usually um, um, to the seller or to the seller broker, and then you basically lay it out for them. Good. So um, I don't have a copy of that, um, um, but it's basically. It's, um, imagine that it's like, you know, if I want to buy this apartment, this is, this is what I want to buy. And, and basically, when, at the end, you can sign it. Once both, both parties, seller and buyers, is signed it, um, what you can do is uh, basically, it's not a legal binding contract, but it's a handshake. So it's almost as good as, 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 a, as, as, a, as a contract. Um, but you, you still need it um, to go for the second stage, which is uh, the purchase and sale contract um, before you make it official. Anyone why we have that instead of like you strictly go to um, PNS, Persian Terms? It's because uh, Persian Sales contract usually is like uh, 15, 20 pages of documents. Um, so basically you sign that uh, many times that you save your time a lot of like money and times because PNS usually is created by lawyers. And then for negotiation to deal with the yeah, so it's, it's, it's easier to, to, um, to negotiate. This is a negotiating tactic, literally negotiating tools between seller and buyer. Yeah. So at the end of that stage, is, is that property under your control then? Or is it still, like, technically not? Usually when you sign it, if they say that you have it um, under, uh, um, uh, under contract. But um, the, the great, so basically when you submit, uh, let's say I'm buying properties from this guy, I usually, I will submit an LI to you and uh, have all the major terms and dates, you know, and then the price. And then um, 
and you were, let's say you upset that thing, like on that, back and forth a few times, and you upset that. Um, so sign it. The next stage is to go to use that and take it over to the lawyers. Let's release my lawyers and have him to draw the PNS and so that we can sign it. So in between that, there's about three to five business days usually. And then because it's obviously, if I'm gonna do that every time, because every contract is a little bit different, if you buy in a different state, then Lee's gonna be really happy because he's always gonna get charged by the policy, but I'm probably not very, more, very happy and um, you don't wanna do that. And uh, so that's what we did. Um, so, um, so you, before you do that, so then this stage is very, is really like, so now imagine that, that like we do all those marketing, we attract all the deals, now you're getting a listing. So I am interested. So this is the stage that I'm submitting offers. Like basically when I say offers, this is the offer. Um, so you will basically submit the offers and then you analyze it. Uh, everything's by the acquisition team, like, you know, if you have your business partner, you do it, have your business partner do it, have someone who have done it, review with you. Your mortgage lender should also review that. Um, basically, they will tell you because um, you know, I always uh, encourage people to have uh, mortgage lenders to look at their deals because at the end of the day, they are the one who lending you the money, right? Um, you can dream about the terms all day long, 60%, 40%, 35% all day long, but you really need the numbers to put in your underwriting before you can actually submit your LOI. So, um, so you need your mortgage brokers to look at that. And as I said, negotiation back and forth. Um, so next is like, this is signed it, the, the letter intent is signed it. And then um, next thing is like, you, you always want to um, have an idea of what you're buying before you actually submit it. So you, so you may, so basically, uh, let's say this is the apartment, 50 units or, or whatever. And the chances you're not gonna be able to look at each one of the units. But the chances you already know what is what is construction on the roof, what does it look like for major five, six units before you're able to submit. Some 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 brokers doesn't let you to walk in, right? Some brokers depend on relationships, but you only walk in as many as you can, so you kinda have an idea when you submit the offers. And um, um, but if you let's say you uh, invest in the US, so you're away. Um, so you would at least have someone to um, to walk the properties for you, other than you already do your, you know, uh, Google Map and things like that, street build. No question? Yeah. Sorry, do you do this walkthrough either by yourself or by other people before uh, or after you sign the letter? I, um, so this is kind of the process. When I, let's say I'm doing my deal flow, my market, right? Yeah. So I'm getting, let's say, five deals a day so <coughs> in my inbox. So this is what I do. When the numbers looks attractive, so I would do on my underwriting. When the number underwriting is still confirming my initial thinking, um, I will potentially, so I would I will still uh, go on Google Maps and look at all those, and it's still good, I would get my property managers, like at that time, hopefully you have property managers at that, at that cities, mm -hmm. and to do um, the walking with me. Because what I'm, I'm, what I'm, what I'm confirming is, should be maybe two years old, three years old, who knows whether they have a buy or not, right? And who knows whether the area has changed enough or not. And uh, I may be fine with that already or may not be. Because the thing is like every day I'm getting this uh, offers, like getting this listing on my inbox. I can find that every every other week. So that's before. Before um, you even submit the letter intent. Not necessary. Okay. Like if the market is really hard that I'll submit the letter. By the way, letter intent is not because like letter intents can take three days back and forth. If you confirming that it's really good buy, then you will fly over there and look at that. Because like you can look, you can look at every single properties every single time. Like for example, my market is in the west. I, it's going to be seven hours to fly over there. What I did, um, what I do is because I, you have your team there, you can basically call him and do a FaceTime. And basically, almost as good as like you walking there. Because when you FaceTime, you actually see you know what the area is like, and that property manager should already know the area pretty good. Otherwise. Um, you can, you can ask the broker, you can ask the appraiser to tell you what is the area. Because what you're confirming is the condition of the properties, like approximations, and the areas, like, you know. So usually, seller's agent is waiting to show that, show that to your property management. Yes, so yes. Just like the residential ones. Just like the residential ones, yeah. Because you don't, like, I, you don't have when you're a buyer, like, I don't deal with the buyer's agents, right, um, at most of the time. 
and like, like you know, when residential, you have buyers and agents, right? Yeah. yeah. So I don't. I usually skip the buyer agents, like you know, like because what what they buy me, right? Like they're not buying me a lot of things in terms of representing me. So I will. I will do my research, like you know, when this like you have to know when you when you look at on site what what it buys you, right? It basically, buys you like surprise. But like usually, you look at a package, you probably have an idea of seventy eight percent of whether it's good investment or not, right? And then you go through a look at that, you know, the market looks right, the neighborhood looks right, and then if you get your property managers to look it for you, it comes down to a lot. But you will be what I would do usually in between LOI and P and S stage, I would definitely go. Ahead. Go ahead and look at that. I want to confirm my feelings. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Ms. Horton, you, you said that um, you want to look at was it five deals a day? So, how many of those end up with a letter of intent? What's the process of going from yeah. looking for a deal yeah. to signing a letter of intent? You're just looking through these deals and you're like, pass, pass, pass. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So, there's two reasons why I'm looking at uh, the, uh, that many deals um, about every day. And for one is, like as a real estate investor, even though my mind cap is Midwest, I always look at the whole United States market. Like I always look at North Carolina, South Carolina, I look at Florida, I look at crazy market like uh, California, and I'm looking at, uh, um, so basically uh, like I, I have a global mind of where the whole US is doing. Because, um, because they're all interconnected. You know, why people move in, uh, invest in Calgary? Because it's cheaper than Vancouver. Why people invest in, 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 in Saskatchewan? Because it's cheaper than Toronto, maybe? So that's capital is move different places to, uh, so in, so, so I do my marketing campaign, basically, my marketing campaign is simple as creating a login on a website and stating that I have interest to different states and you will immediately get listed, right, after that. And, and the more, it's just like single family, there's no difference. The more you see deals, the more you have a feeling as about the market. Like, you know, after, after 20 deals, you know that this kind of deal and this kind of market and this kind of area is probably 40, 50,000. It is up, so you have an idea. So you know, it's, it's, it's like you're building up your, your feeling of the market. So why, why do you say that this is this is number in, in Calgary? This is number in Calgary? Because, we, after you know that you don't have to check today, and you don't want to check today, right? And that's kind of what you know. Um, sorry. Um, so I, I look at so many deals a day, and sometimes you can't even liberate that. But by looking at the price, by looking at the area, by looking at, um, yeah, the, and, and, and basically you educate yourself pretty good. What is the whole Canada doing? What is the whole US doing? Even if you're not investing those 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 states, and 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 many of those you write, I don't write offer on that. But uh, but when you could relationship with relation to brokers, that one thing is you do, you can do is that you also notice many of those deals doesn't have a list price, right? And another thing I'll give to you is like you know you can always ask the listing brokers like, right? can I? Um, and and if you knew it's it's harder, but you can always use the term is like, can I have price guidance on that? And basically what it means is, or in other words, it's a risk per price. It's basically the risk that you use. So it's basically even an idea to, because you need to underwrite, it's, it's totally different. It's like 250,000 or 300,000 could go, right? To underwrite your number. So you need to know that so that you know how to pay a return. Um, if you acquire, you may be writing writing five offers a month, but uh, soft offers. You don't have to always write LY, because you can feel the numbers and you can get the, where, where, let's say it is a six million dollar property, and you use that, and then if it's like still good, then you can start an offer. It's like you know five eighty or you know what I'm that's that's my way. Like I, I don't always put in offers, but don't be fear that um, a lot of investors, including myself at the beginning, is like fear that what if I get it? You know, shit, I don't have the money, right? That's the, that's, the, that's the problem, right? But, but, but that's me. That's that's me at the beginning. Don't, and that is a fear. It's not. It's, the chance is like it's not a contract, you know. Like it, it, like after you write in five, the fact that you know it's like what's the big deal? But yeah, it's just like calling. It's just like fairly relationship book. Can I just ask? Um,
call them up to court and say, hey, I'm interested in this. So I, I, my way to do it, mm -hmm. uh, I know some people go all the way to knowing the kid names and knowing what is the favorite uh, basketball team. Mm -hmm. um, um, I don't do that. Uh, but I, I, I personally find that if I'm really interested in this is the market that I'm going in, I'll fly down there. What does it take? The most market you can spend five, cent, five to seven hundred bucks to go to any market, right? And stay in a motel at hundred bucks a night. And a grand in a weekend and you can basically know inside out the market. That's how we do it. Because most, most, like, remember, like most brokers, nowadays it's so hot in, in the market. It's like most brokers getting 50 calls a day. Like the chance that you're gonna call them and know um, that you are out, out the country buyers and, um, and if you're new in the game, and they, and by the way, they talk, they talk to you, but the, the chance is, by new, I mean near the commercial. They know you right away, by the way. <laughs> they know you're new. Um, they know you um, So I will start by going there. Um, after I probably spend a month to, to understand the market, and I, and I, and I know that I want to invest there. I will find uh, five to ten brokers that I really want to know. Right? I will start contacting them. I will book my trip in about two months or so, so that I can fly them there. And just because it's a very the way I understand it is, you can see, you can Google all day long, but I don't trust it until I actually see it. One example is I go to Beach Boy in the middle of the night, 3 a.m. It's safer than my home. I don't trust the NM. So, uh, yeah, that's um, Second stage. Um, purchase and sales agreement. So basically it's a sales contract. It's a purchase and sales contract. Um, so let's say now this is where, this is here. So after you sign your LOI, LOI um, the next step is you um, engage your lawyers to draft this. So in here, I'm going to say effective date. Effective date is the date that you sign the contract. And that's the date that at the clock start ticking. Um, so um, you, let's say you say, let's say it's October 1st, you sign the contract. Let's say you have 30 days to close it. So it means that between effective day and closing day, you have, uh, you have sorry, 90 days, I said 90 days. You have 90 days to close this property. And, and why is they have a name for this? Because this is a really important day. So basically everything start at that time. The clock start ticking and you need to be, uh, get working. So, um, yeah, so that's effective days. And then, um, so that's almost the most important date of, of closing um, because, um, um, that's the day that you will start. You most of the most of the LOI or PNS will state that you know you have to pay deposit. You know the the, the down payment of the you know the down payment deposit three to five business day from this day. So it means that your check. Let's say you're buying a million dollar properties. If it's your your your, your deposit is twenty twenty thousand, you need to write your deposit check five to seven five to whatever date is specified on the PNS. To keep it open to the brokerage, so that's very important. Uh, one there, right there. So yeah, three to five business day to um, to the escrow. Um, in U.S., title company is very uh, popular, and uh, so right there. And um, P and S. So one thing that is, uh, if you imagine that LOI is a three pages contract, P and S is the whole contract. So talk about when. How, how, it's basically talk about everything. It's talk, it's talk about all the steps here. I mean, how many days you have, and what are the terms, whether you can, what, what are the conditions, uh, what can you leave, and everything. Imagine this is basically the same uh, as your weaker contract, except this is for commercial, and there's no standard. There's no standard PNS contract uh, in commercial. Um, so, Usually, um, depending on the market, right? Um, some market is really hot. Buyer, sellers are pushing this to um, 30 to 40 days. So imagine that. And then you will know that. That's a lot of things you have to do in 30, 40 days. You have to get your lenders on board, you have to get your money guys come in, you have to do a due diligence, you still have to walk your individual units, you have to check, title is good, the lawyer is good, uh, good on the title, and um, you have a million things you have to do. 
Good. Due diligence. Um, so, what are right? So again, here the earnest money, which is deposit, is already wired to the escrow. Due diligence. Um, this is the time that you have to reveal everything. So, why you ask ask me about um, uh, how you look at it, when you look at the properties? But before you look at the property, put an LI, you should already do your due diligence, right? That's why you say that it's a good deal. Um, you think that's why I'm doing due diligence again? Anyone know? Because you already do your underwriting. Right? Why are we doing the we doing due diligence here? Verify the numbers. Yeah. Um, so um, one example is um, so when they when they give you the package, they usually give you three things. Bless you. They usually give you the OM, which is offering memorandum. They usually give you a RAM roll, uh, which is the income every month. Um, you ask for last two three years trend monthly, and you also get for PNL. So you would remember usually you when you get in five years things. The underwriting you did is, let's just say the high level. And now is the time to actually verify every single entry of that. Does this make sense for unit-wise? Um, does it make sense um, that they put uh, 900 per door for payroll, let's say? Um, does it make sense they put uh, uh, 25,000 for, uh, for contract services? So you're like making sure every one of those. And most importantly, um, how do you verify income? I talked about it last time, uh, earlier before too. How do you verify? Verify income when they say that this is how much you get from Rambo. How do you know if it's true? It's true. It's just a program. No, I'm curious. How do you no. know? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You check bank account. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Um, you check bank account because um, everyone can put in rent um, and then never collect it. <laughs> right? It just feels like you know that you can put in rent as your as your management program and never collect it. So you always sorry. So question is, yeah, what I've received before is like a, an Excel spreadsheet, and I'll mm -hmm. say for each unit we collect this. That's very well. Right, but so I can ask for their bank statements. Yeah, you should. You have to. Okay. Not at the LOI okay. stage. You no, should, but here I can. Yeah, because yeah, okay. you're already okay. on the contract. Okay. So, um, and I know Canada. Sometimes they don't even give you financial and you put an LOI. I just laugh. And uh, how can you underwrite? You don't underwrite, like, yeah. because sometimes it's so hard they don't they don't give you the financials. Yeah. Uh, but at this time, you can um, you need to verify all the paper trail of the money going in, okay. including expense. So otherwise, you just trust the numbers. Right. And people love I love them, but I don't trust them. <laughs> Do you list some of these things in the LOI to kind of warm them up to say, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna want these things? Yeah. What you do is remember, like on the due diligence, uh, I have a due diligence checklist at the end of it. Like three, four, three to five pages, uh, listing all the income, bank statement, rent roll, contract with set with third parties, um, other list of properties, title, um, insurance, current current mortgage. So basically, anything um, that um, that's another reason why you need to come to the bouquet. So I'm talking about this. So um, you you can never be basically you. You, you always want to check. So due diligence is the time that you want to check all the income, all the expense, and you want to triple check, double check, and you want to have other people check your work. So, and that's why, um, you know, you would think the 30, 40 days is a lot. What if the seller delayed a week to give it to you? They never delayed it. <laughs> they always delayed it, right? Uh, the last time is better for them. Right? You know, if they delete the week, Delay the week, then you're gonna have less information to read. And another thing is like, you know, bank deposit is very important. And the utilities, usually you have, and I do check utilities from all the, because utilities is really easy to check, it's all from the government or municipal. Which one is that? Tabulated to the building. One reason is why tabulated to the buildings, because um, there's always one or two buildings who have expensive utilities. Why do you want to find out? Anyone? Uh, utility. Let's, let's say you're buying your service. Yeah, of course. Why, why, why do I want to find out? Why do you want Older to find out? Older buildings, some of them, they, you know, they just have older windows. Uh, why Whatever else. Maybe it's just a wall. Yeah, very good. Like if the expense.
strength is high, what what is it impact like impact it a lot? Your income, your your net income, right? And what? then it's also being a purchase price, right? Oh yeah, and yeah, and and and, and why the, the why why others, why do I want to check individual buildings? Because if that building has <coughs> times utility of the other building, what is it potential hindering? Maybe it's leaking water in this one. Yeah, because I want to. I want to be when I go in. I want to be a, a, a point. When I decrease expense, what is that? Increase my income. Oh, increase in, increase my income. So if I'm, I can accept double, maybe, but I can't accept six times, right? That something's going to be wrong. Like you know, most of the time it's leaking water. Um, it, it's, it's leaking water is on, on the pipe or whatever. Like in fact, I have a building that's like three times the other one. I, that's the first thing I say to my PM. So first thing is like, go find the leak, right? So yeah, utility. Um, so you, you want to check every one of those, expense income. But you also, it's the time that you go in and do your uh, uh, unit by unit inspections. You know, um, you need to check each one of the unit. If you buy 200 unit properties, it, uh, it, it's not that long. It, it, because the one that you don't see is the one that can give you a surprise. You know, a, a unit can, in Canada, it's, it's way up higher too. It, it, a, a unit can fix for 1,000 units. I mean, 1,000, if you're doing well at, that's always what I do. Or five times of that. Imagine that you have five of that, right? So you always have to check individual units. Good. So you again, you have a mortgage broker performing your underwriting for you because you know what? Who is the biggest investors in most of our deals? Bank. 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 So if they go, they, they allow you to go ahead. It's a confidence, right? They put in seventy percent of the money. That usually they are, they 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 they, they, they have confidence in this deal. And that's kind of how I create it. That's how I look at it. This is my team. Um, attorney, attorney negotiate terms with the lenders. Attorney usually, um, because lenders, I mean, the uh, lenders always also have uh, their lawyers too, which we pay. Um, loan engagement letter, um, signed it. So we're looking at how many days here? Thirty days before uh, the closing. So um, you will get. Um, anyone know what I'm talking about? Loan engagement letters. So basically, it's, the, it's basically it's a long sheet that uh, whether that's like two, three pages, it's kind of like a wide, high, high, high level, talk about uh, prepayment, what's the long term. Basically, you should know all this beforehand, but you're confirming it. And plus, uh, you they were mortgage brokers, then the commitment fee, I mean, uh, the mortgage broker fee is also in here as well. So they sign that, um, so that you have a loan, and um, Long fee. So, so this is what, what I mean by that. If you deal with mortgage broker, most times we deal with mortgage brokers, then you have to pay them a fee. Um, and then um, hopefully you already tell your property management to know that they're gonna take over it. Um, because when you take over, um, there's a lot of things gonna happen. They can sign new lease, you can tell the tenants that new management coming in. Um, and um, if you're doing value planning that I always do, and usually there's a reason why you're going in to let them know that's new because there's a problem, you're gonna fix it. So uh, uh, we, we, we repositioning your properties. Um, that's, most of the time it's also repositioning the tenants. So meaning that some of the tenants might, uh, might not be staying there after you purchase. Um, who have a problem when I say, when I say this repositioning tenant? Who have a problem? Because what I'm talking about is some of the tenants need to go. So think about that. Like if this tenant is paying four hundred bucks, now I'm telling now I'm telling him to pay six hundred bucks. So that guy usually cannot pay um, because you're talking about fifty percent increase, right? Um, there's a reason why that property is sitting at four hundred bucks if the market is pay, paying six hundred bucks, right? Um, when you the way that I look at it is, I know we're Canadian. We always say sorry. Um, we always want to. Uh, mitigate uh, and 
also take care of others. But the thing is this, if the market is charging 600 bucks, there's a reason why, we, why the existing tenants pay in 400 bucks. And if you go in and do work and increase the properties, values, internal, external, I think there's a reason why you can pay charging the market, right? Right? We, 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 you have a responsibility to the tenants, but you also have a responsibility to yourself. Most importantly, very important to your investors, right? Fiduciary responsibility, by the way, is the more, it is, it is even more than yourself. That's why. So, um, so residential, we don't usually have engineering reports. So engineering reports, just like the check at the, um, um, the area, whether they have oil underneath, whether that is uh, asbestos um, on the constructions. And um, so third party engineering report, usually three to 7,000. So it depends on what they check. And uh, update survey. Survey is just basically your power meters. So if you uh, have someone to go by, it's no different from what we have in Canada, but you're updated, you have to get updated. And um, Marketing package, so basically this is the OM, so offer management to the insurance agent. So why do that? Because your underwriter should already know how much you're gonna be paying for your insurance, right? Because your mortgage broke, your mortgage lenders, I mean your lender is gonna want to know your insurance and how much is it as a part of the new map. And also they know that you are able to get a mortgage, I mean get insurance. And conduct your unit by unit walkthrough. Power package created usually 15 to 20 pages to investors. You see now that's a lot of things that go through that you have to do, and not only yourself, and many of the things you can do yourself. You're not gonna be doing your engineering report, right? And even your engineer, you're not that type of engineer, you can't, you're not qualified for that. You're not gonna be able, you're not, a, you're not a surveyor, you're not able to do updates already by yourself. There's a lot of this, all these things. You're gonna be probably creating a public package for your investors, hoping at this time you already created. Um, so you see, that's a lot of things you're going through in your mind and have to do. You can't basically do it all by yourself. You need a team to do all this. Cool. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, prepare property package for investors. So um, do you, you have investors line up already when you do the letter of intent and then purchase sale contract? Like, are they saying, okay, I'm willing to invest with you and then present me with the property. I always have to invest in line up. Yeah. And I always double raise. What I mean double raise is if you if you need a million to close a property, let's just say you need millions from your pocket to close a property, I always raise more than enough. Many times double. Because there's always invest there's always the investors um, who have Things going on, or who pulled out last minute. But, but at this stage, like, are they just uh, committed? You know, like orally, just verbally saying, "Okay, I will invest with you." There's no kind of um, any signing paper, or whatever, or like money into the trust, whatever. You can think about this. Um, um, you can, that's like a commitment letter. I know some guys do commitment letters. Um, think about this, the way that I look at it is, let's say you need to raise a million dollar to close the properties. And let's say each one of these guys, 10 guys bring in 100K, just in this sense, speaking. Um, some of the guys do pull out, realistically. Some of the guys do pull out. Because if I'm investors, I usually have four or five different projects working at the same time, right? All these things slide, by the way. All these LI things will slide. And next week, your investor might gather more interesting opportunities, more return opportunities, if you, you don't know. And that's why you always, you can always tell them this is first come, first serve. And you always want to raise more than, more than you need to. And I learned it the hard way. Um, and that's why this 60 to 90 days is so stressful, personally thinking. One of the reasons is, um, like Matt, you know, you you raise money all the time. What is your ratio? It's like when you get investor to investor, you how often do they call it up? When you actually have a property, how often? <laughs> what is the success rate? One percent. 
What is it? I don't, uh, I don't, I don't usually raise my money. Um, I use the wholesale. Okay. Um, okay. If, if I have investors that are interested, I shop with the investors, okay. but I don't, I, I mean, I find that's an easy So if you have investor lineup and you have really good relation with them, you have less, you're going to be less, have less problem. But always think about that. If you're raising a million, let's say three of the investors pulled up, and you're still needing 300,000, and you only have 10 days more to go, right? Let's say you're ready for that. Think about that, how stressful it is. Uh, th think about that, your seven investors already committed, they're already, let's say, in the middle of wider numbers. So think about that, you have to explain to them the deal doesn't go through as well. Not only that, so all the work that we already done, um, so let's go back. So by the way, this engineering report costs money. Survey costs money. Um, lawyer costs money. Um, deposit, if you write the term correct, you can get it back. But let's just say that you're 50,000 in the problems. If you 10 days in and you're missing the, you're miss, missing the $300,000, let's, let's, let's say you don't get extensions, because the sellers is like having multiple offers and things like that, they're very popular now in, in, in US so so hot. You can lose that fifty thousand. And in my case, my case is eight thousand dollars. So right away closing my deal. So think about all those things. Because you you can get you, you can you can tell the investors to cheat in with you. You know, seven investors that those are passive investors. They are there to support you for whatever you're trying to do for your real estate deals, whatever. You can pay for yourself. So that's why I say it's always better to overrace. And and you can never over overrace by the way. And if you're doing five deals I mean a day, you could you should have ready to have your other LY ready for your guys. This 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 let's say you have big twelve guys coming for the 10, 10, 10, 10 investors. Let's say you have two and assess you tell them to go to other properties. Okay. So when you say you have them lined up, you essentially already have You essentially already collected money from them. And it's in, it's like when you say it's lined up, it's mm -hmm. just a verbal, is it a letter, or you actually have them? I, I would say that you're ready to invest. And uh, so, and that's why it's about two weeks to three weeks before the closing, I would have them to wire to the ESCO, to the lawyer ESCO, whether it's a lawyer ESCO or title company, because the money I don't see, uh, I almost discounted. It's, it's a bit, yeah, it's because everyone everyone has from something to on an LA. You say two to three weeks before, so really everything is just verbal commitment or at least some sort of written. Like, like and then you say, "I've got a deal now. Send the money." Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you, and and that's why you have so much things to do. Like imagine you have ten investors trying to pull this one million deals. You probably would be talking to an investor every other day. You know, you, you should, and, 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 and we are invested too, so you know that pulling money, even from a 401k RSP, it, it's not as easy as that. Like, you know, even selling stocks is not easy as that. Um, it only takes one investor to not invest, to not pull the money in your escrow, to not close in the whole deals. So that's why I always say it's over it. Good, good, good. So review the um, type of commitment, uh, which is basically your lawyer's responsibility mostly. So that's why coming to play um, to have a proper lawyer attorney in the US uh, is really important. Um, you're not gonna tell him to which website to check, what title, and what issues with that. The type the lawyer should be, you're paying him, let's say $15,000, and you hopefully that guy will know what he's doing, right? And hopefully, um, like not hopefully, but your team is ultimately is your responsibility um, to know that he's the right guy. Okay. Third party reports, like you know, as any phase one, a romanto phase two, romanto engine report, uh, any any lead lead paint conditions. It is built by 1970s, I think. Then lead paint is pretty legal at the time. Then because 
when you're doing your lease to your new tenants, basically you need to specify that they are okay on that, still leasing, still leasing, uh, le leasing your unit, because otherwise they put a potential issue, you're covering your ass. You guys are good. Uh, in closing, um, so review, again, so I, even though I say that you view your inv investor interest, but you seriously, you are always making sure the investor um, is, they say they invest and they're gonna invest. Um, you basically, this, even though I say the investor, but you know, to be honest, think about that, the investor is your fund, and if you don't have a fund, you just cannot close it, as simple as that. So you're basically talking to them at least weekly. Investors, um, do you disclose each other's name to? You don't have to. You don't have to. Okay. And you, in fact, you should protect them individually. Like you know, each individual, like you should, you don't have to. You, you should keep them separate. Um, if you two are an investor with me, other than you guys maybe on the same call as only to to me, like when we're doing the investor call, you guys don't have a reason to know each other. Um, so, um, so attorney creating structures, right? Operating agreements, PPM, subscription agreement. Um, those are really lengthy and expensive documents um, that you get someone to create. <laughs> and then uh, escrow account set up at the bank. So you have, um, so this is actually well. I mean, what I mean by that, you have your own bank account set up and the escrow account is not your account, it's uh, usually the lawyer's account. Um, so this is, I mean, your bank account. Because one thing about setting a bank account in the US, or learning the hard way, you have to be pre presented physically at the branch. Otherwise you cannot create a US account. I have to fly to US three times to create one bank account, believe it or not, uh, because of this. And because, uh, um, because of this, yeah. So, and then um, everyone's, again, very stressfully, Moving on to the last stage. Um, track of funds. Make sure that you have fund coming in. Uh, lenders uh, approve the deals. So the lenders should have approved the deals, but they always on time. When you sign a commitment letter, they basically approve the deal. But they always, again, un un until they finally say that, um, because the, when they approve this, they want to see all the monies already go to the escrow or the closing of the lawyers. So, um, one thing that I don't know whether I put it here is called um, uh, rate lock. The rate lock. So basically, is uh, usually it will charge one to two percent of the loan fee before the closing. Um, let's say you, you let's say you buy this hundred uh, million dollar problems. Let's say you are uh, getting a loan hundred thousand. They will charge let's say three percent of the loan fee so that they can lock the rate for you. It's about 10 days into, uh, before the closing. Is that in the States or is that in Canada? In the States. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't have it. But think about that, how stressful is that? We don't have you, to. Yeah. How stressful is that? Um, if, if you already have a difficult time to raise all capital, and you also need to raise another 330,000 to put it as a deposit to the lender to lock the rate. And you can get it back at closing, by the way. But think about that. Sign the commitment, I think we talked about it already. And ESCO uh, uh, so which is the, they're doing the settlement schedule. Conference call with uh, lenders. Some, some lenders will have a conference call with, with us and, with, with, and the buyer and the seller. So they want to line up everyone, making sure that on the closing days, everyone knows what they're talking about. And then manage can take over, we talked about it already. So this is pre-closing. 30, 45 days, 10 days to close. So I talk about the rate lock. So this is the exciting part that you have to suddenly find out the 3% uh, from your bank account, not from the investors, right? And then verify that you have bind, you have, uh, you have bind from the insurance company and um, review the loan documents. So loan document usually is for 4,500 pages of documents. So um, it's, it's no biggie, uh, you just have to review that. Um, and then uh, um, review that. And um, all private money is in, because um, like if you don't have the money, then you cannot close it at the closing date. 
Um, who thinks this is a lot? I think this is a lot, right? It's pretty vigorous for, um, 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 the biggest thing is, I think to me is you, you using other people's money um, to close this. And one mistake, if you're using your own money, um, you know, it, it's still tough. But if you think, think about it, you screw up and, and, and the investors, is, it, that's why I was talking about is a fiduciary responsibility. The investors, they're not always the million, that million dollar guy next to They may be saving the, the 100,000 or 200,000 all their life. Think about that. Um, and also think about your name. You only have one name. You can't change the name every other week. If you screw up once, um, it's gonna take a long time to review that. So um, one to three days closing, um, all the documents, so if I don't have to physically go to, um, I don't have to physically go to the US and, and sign the documents, uh, thanks God, but you basically get an order, either an email or FedEx you know, during the old times, and you review that 100 times, if you have PPMs, it's talking about all those um, um, structures on shares, like you have 10 investors, what is the shares, what kind of, you know, you have the lawyers, and um, getting all the KYC package coming back, you know, which is a know your client's packages if you're raising money. And, uh, and then your sources and uses, which usually this is uh, a settlement letters, is about two, three pages talking about who use what. Um, um, detail every single things that you spend and things like that. Again, you have to check that um, with knowing a lot of, you know, lenders, how much they're building, and you, so all this you kind of need to, you need to have an idea of what is the going away, right? And, and you know, if the survey is charging $5,000, you need to know that makes sense, you know? You know, if, 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 you're, if you're a raw metal guy charging $3,000 for a report, you have to know that makes sense. So, uh, otherwise you cannot check that. Sorry, can you explain a little bit down this review source and uses from lender? I did yeah. not get that. So, um, so think about that, you raise a um, million dollars to close this property. 800,000 is for the deposit, and 200,000 is for closing, okay? So the uses of this a million bucks is divided into this 80-20% format. So, the, so one of the uses, as you see an example of uses, is the deposit. Another uses, it will be 5,000 bucks for the survey. Another, another, another uh, $10,000 will be for your uh, mortgage fee for your lenders, I mean for your brokers. So all this is the use of the fund, of the equity, of, of the money that you raise. So that's why it's the uses. So sources is like, um, it, it doesn't show on the, on the seven letter, but it should show on your uh, public, public package. Let's say you're raising a million bucks, right? And, and your investors should know yeah, how much you are using, why you're using. If, if, if you're raising a million bucks and you only deposit, using the deposit of 18,000 for the for closing problem, and you have 200,000 that you serve for closing, your investor need to know each one of these individual numbers, why they is that, why you need to raise a million, not 18,000. So i give you an example of a couple of those, will be, um, will be uh, because the report, the final report costs this much, and your travel, you say costs that much. Your acquisition fee costs that much. So you have to detail each one of those. Because the investor is investor is really smart. They're gonna say, why are you raising more than you need for the deposit? Right? So so the so you sources is where the money comes from, right? Where the investor, even your strategy, maybe some of that is your equity. I encourage all people should put in the skin in the game. Why investors should trust you, right? And then the uses is what is the goal? Like to pay the public man, the inspector to pay the loan fee, to pay all this and all that. And uh, so this is like really last stretch of the closing. Um, um, you know, even speaking about that is really stressful because it's a lot of things you have to go through. Um, imagine this, that's, that's why I say you're always trying to double raise, like trying to raise enough money. Imagine that all this all around you is happening in your mind, affect your mind, it's like, where is the money come from? I mean, talk about your investment money. We're still missing 200K. That's really stressful. And you, you probably should think about the back, back of front. Maybe it's come from yourself, like temporarily, 
It's not like like. But, but remember, it's like we all want to raise enough money, but the, but the truth is, when you knew when you're gonna attract like that, and you're gonna need to you're gonna need to put some of your money into your deals most of the time to prove that you are worthy and you are real and you're serious and you are motivated and you're trying to get this one, right? If, if you, you deal with other people's money, it's a really big deal. Good. Um, so I think I talked about most of this. Uh, side the commitment letters, confirm closing agents. Uh, this is the, one of the most key persons in the whole thing because he's gonna, he's gonna detail the, um, the uses of all everything. And uh, in my case, uh, my settlement letters go to the fifth versions of that. Um, one, two, three, four, dro I'm trying to talk about draft versions because it is, it's constantly updated from, uh, uh, from, from lenders, from, from lawyers, what is the charges and all those things. So it's, um, you will be getting kind of one copy of this every single day, or a couple of copies, or even one or two copies every single day is closer to the school as you move along to the closer of the uh, closing dates. And you have to look at that very, very closely because that's one letter, one pages or three pages that tell you all the money that goes out at the closing. I, basically, the, the example is like the million bucks that going in, everything is, is explaining this. And one little if mistakes is going to be very costly if mistakes. And cost it with investors, let them investor know how is it going. And, and at the back of your mind, it's like, you know, where's your money, right? and um, create, create a closing packages. Basically all those things that you want to send to your investor, closing binders, um, and, um, and a public package to send it to investors. So now, we close, okay? Very happy, um, post closing. I add this because I, I certainly know that you are not, once you're closing, it's just the beginning of the work, by the way. This, remember about to us talk about acquisition check 3%? That's why you're getting it. So that's why you and your partner's getting it. Um, if you do all those, and uh, many people should agree, or I will agree that you should get paid. No, like we're not, even though you're working with investors, some investor may, may not be comfortable with that. Be upfront. Not every investor is your investor too, right? And um, if you're able to find better returns, I think you should be paid. Um, so we, so you, now you receive the final copy of all the documents for the sale, the lawyer should pre pre prepare all this for you and you be doing this right now. And uh, during the old times you send a CD to the investor, now you can send a uh, job online to them. And then uh, cash a check, you know, this is the exciting word. You know, I put an example, if you put a $5 million deal, your team get 150,000, how many deals can you do? Can you do it again? You save your team. You save your team. That's one of the two thousand. Yeah. Keep your team in this. Two questions. Uh, so, um, your partners and yourself. So not your. So anyone you pay doesn't get that. So if you get you pay right, who who get paid? Why doesn't get that? Well, most people don't get that because he is already getting his one percent or low fee. Um, if you have another two business partner, let's just say your partner, investor partner. Point this to to get it. You three will split that whatever you guys decide to do. You're not including the passive partners. No, 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 no. No passive partners. Um, no. And uh, yeah, it's um, yeah, that's how we do it. And uh, I just add this. Um, you need to know, we really need to know how much you need to close it. And that's a lot of things you can miss. Imagine if missing um, one item, um, then you, you basically, you're either gonna be know everything or you're gonna have a huge bubble, right? In your bank, uh, as a syndicator. And talk about it, like these three partners, if, if it is for you, Scott. Um, you need someone to hold your hand. I have someone to hold my hand when I close my first deal. Um, with all money, you cannot close. And do you know who is doing what? And that's, you can see that there's a lot of things going on at the same time. Um, try to close your deal. 
And you know, don't get me wrong, your team, if a good one, should help you along the way. Your lawyer should be able to help you along the way. Your mortgage broker should be able to help you along the way. Unfortunately, um, sometimes you don't get the best lawyer, sometimes you don't get your best mortgage brokers. So you, um, you're gonna pay a lot with that. Like, but that, uh, in my case, my lawyer wasn't, wasn't as good as what I think. So, um, and that translates the cost. Because the more time they take, they're charging you. They're not charging, most of the times they're not charging uh, 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 a fair fee. So the more times, and they're only charging you because the more time they you need to negotiate with the lender the lawyers, which you also pay as a, as a deal closer, and, and you pay double that. The lawyers is no big deal, it's 400 bucks an hour, right? Um, yeah. <coughs> Sign up for the food camp. So that's my hat, so if you are truly interested in learning more, um, it's a two days thing. It's uh, October 12th, full day, 9 to 5, and then uh, Sunday is uh, 12 to 4. So, um, so that's it for today. So, um, so I talked about most of this already. It's not going to be, so I spent my whole year talking about how to close properties. You're not going to be able to take, learn everything on those one and a half days. But the idea is, I'm able to spend maybe two, three hours on each one of the topics, how to find the best market right now investing. So on your signing sheets, I think on one of the items is say check yes for that uh, bootcamp, and all, another one is check yes or no for uh, that uh, 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 quick start, quick start uh, spreadsheets. So if you check yes, I will send it to you as well. Uh, talk about how I'm doing with my fund, how to how to find a, how to create your team, how to cash acquisition checks. Um, so if you are interested, I've won three seats for today, and come sign and talk talk to Mandy. I just won three seats, and uh, first come first serve. Artist is um, I'm giving a discount for fifty uh, percent, um, and then October is uh, five hundred bucks after the after the discount. And uh, so, number six. Questions. Good questions. Yeah, working time. So you guys can that work. I'll just do the first way. Yeah, yeah. Working a lot? Yeah, so a bit. Yeah, no, I Yeah. That you go to a head or no? Yeah. Yeah. That you go to a head? What is that? Yes. Yeah. How much you put in your money? Yeah. And how much you make of that? This is uh, your uh, No, this is not, sorry. This is your uh, 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 uh,